So today we're going to uh, do some work on a 290. We're going to change out the carburetor and a few other things. Let's get right to it. Alright, to access the carburetor, we're going to take off this air cleaner cover. we got to take off those two screws real quick. Okay, so next we'll pop this boot right off. Alright, and we're going to take these two nuts off. Okay, we'll go to the next step. So we have to take the throttle linkage off next. So to see that right there, and it pops off using a pair of pliers right here. So if we look at this old carburetor, I can get it in the camera lens here, uh, and the new carburetor, the top breather, is different. This has a different style air intake, and furthermore, when you hook it into the air cleaner, they will line up with each other. So it has a better airflow setup. Um, we'll find out how she works. So in the carburetor kit, we're gonna we got a new fuel line and a brand new fuel filter. So we're gonna replace this bad boy right here. We're gonna pull him out, and as you pull him out, you take a pair of needle nose pliers in through the gas tank here, and you latch onto that filter. You pull that off, keep it with you so you don't have to fish for it in the tank, and then you replace this new line with the filter on the end. You have to fish the line through and put the filter on. I will try to film it for you. So I have some gas in this so I'm going to just tilt it on its side and here I'm going to take the cap off. I am going to look at that filter which I can see plain as day. But, well, the battery is getting low. Get right on to that filter right here.
continue and there it is there's your old line and your old filter set those aside dry off your gloves get your new filter and your new line so the filter has to go in last and that can be cumbersome make sure you put it in correctly I'm going to put my gas cap back on because there is a little bit of residual and you got to play this don't lose the gas on yourself game as you do it. And this is the fun part because not only is it cumbersome to get in but it's also ribbed. So it fights you almost every inch of the way. We got her started. Now just finagle and push as you do it. And you can go on the other line, which I, other end, in through the tank. That's what I'm going to do in just about a second here. Almost got it in. If you can do it from the top, it's great. Yeah, we got her. Let's see. If we can just press that in. We're going to press it. And I might have to pull two from the other side so it seats really well. You can't have any leaks. You get dirt in there and everything else. Okay. Now we just make sure your tools are clean as you go into the gas tank. So this, we'll put our new filter in. Give it a little twist action to get it seated all the way deep in there. There we go. There it is. Set that back in. And there's a home for it in there. And there it is. Okay, so now I'm going to pull down. Let's see if I can get this to seat. Not spilling any gas. don't want to go crazy with it because it's still delicate it's just rubber really there we go okay we'll put that line back over here and reinstall that carburetor as we did before. Put your gas cap back on so we don't have a mess. And once I get on top, I reinspect it. This looks like a gap there. We just make sure there isn't. Okay, so now we're going to set the carburetor in place. The fuel lines uh, go on as you do it with the help of some needle nose pliers. 
you can just push that on firm. The other one lines right up, and as you slide it in, you just hold it firm. There we go. It's really that simple. Nuts back on. Before we snug it in place, we'll get it pressed in and check our choke and line up our gas, our throttle linkage. Linkage is real simple, slides right in place and you just lay it right down. We're going to get that on our uh, throttle, squeeze up your trigger. I know you can't see what I'm doing. Once you get it in place, press it with a screwdriver. Snaps into place. Let's check our choke mechanism. And that works as it should. So now we can tighten these up with the wrench. So as you get it tight, you don't have to go crazy. I'm using a short wrench. If you had a 3H drive with a deep well, you could over tighten it. This way you just snug it up. I could use a quarter inch drive. Just remember the longer the wrench, the more torque you're going to put on it. This does not need a lot of torque. Steels are notorious for vibrating apart, except for the carburetors. They stay snug. Feels good. Everything's good. Okay. Now we will put on our air cleaner. Okay, now we want to change the coil and the spark plug. So on the top, we'll get you a different view, but if we go right here is your spark plug, and to change the coil, we got to take off the pull start mechanism. Let me get you a better angle. Now we will put on our air cleaner. Okay, now we want to change the coil and the spark plug. So on the top, we'll get you a different view, but if we go right here is your spark plug. And to change the coil, we got to take off the pull start mechanism. Let me get you a better angle. Okay, so we got four star head screws that got to come out. Break them. 
break them. Use a, they're fairly long, inch and a half maybe, or an inch. it before it runs away. Okay, there's your pull start. We don't have to worry about this. It's working, but this is the bad boy that we got to take out. There are two star heads, same size, hopefully, yeah. And this is your coil. His issue with this machine is after it heated up, he couldn't start it. So we are going to change his coil as he requested. We will also change spark plug. So we can keep this screw on these too so there's no confusion but there really shouldn't be because the other one is on a different style. Now we got to unplug from our and this unsnap it. We're going to have to do some more surgery on this style. Okay. Okay, so here's the old coil and the new coil. Let's, so, let's set it up just like that. So, yep, they're a match. We'll put it right back in. Alright, so if we, on this coil, we take the boot off. It's just a little elbow grease here to pull it. Okay. So we set that down. We take a screwdriver just to lift up on. Everything's loose. All the screws are loose. And we're going to fish this right up through. Not really hurting anything. Not pinching the wire. semi-crooked needle nose. I'll fish it out, hopefully. I'm not going to bore you with it because it may take me a few minutes, but you get the gist of it. Okay, so I, I'm fishing it around and once you just get it angled right, she'll come right up to the top here. Leave that up there and we'll take our flashlight out. Back on the side. Install, finish installing the coil.
once you get it all lined up, it's very self-explanatory from there. Okay, we'll hit pause. So you tighten these guys down as hard as you can, really. You don't want the coil to come out, come off. There we go. Let's not forget this wire. Let's make sure it's on snug. Good. All right, and there was two wires. Make sure those are on. Push your foil wire all the way through. And let's put the boot on it. And that's just as simple as pushing it right back on into place. You keep pushing it until you see it on this end, and it has to be able to accept the tip of the spark plug. Uh, it may take a little bit of an undertaking and some persuasion. There it is. Now, if you just simply take a pen head. So now it will accept the spark plug head. Now what we got to do is change the spark plug. Can't forget that. Well, I had someone to it, huh? Good spark plug still. Just snug. You don't need to strip anything. Just snug. Real snug. And then we'll put our spark plug wire on it and put everything back together. So we'll just put this back like it was. This goes over your air cleaner. I'm going to put the pull start right back on. Put this bad boy on first. It seems to make life easier if you do. Crisscross is always a good way to get things going. because that was just a drill. One thing, I, I love steel chainsaws. They're really good, top notch. But I tell you what, when you're out there cutting the wood up, you better have some tools to keep things tight because they got so much power, it comes with a lot of vibration. 
So your goal when you have it in the shop, get it really tight. Final step is get this air box in place. There we go. That simple. Okay, we're gonna give her a test run in just a second. Here we go. Fire in the hole. Set it down. It, I find it cumbersome to fish through here and feel like I'm on the right screw. So we got the three, you got the T, you got the H and L. That T will set your, your idle, it's your throttle. The H is the one that I'm concerned about because I wasn't getting maximum RPMs from it. So let's see if she will start it up. I don't good. So when my uh, camera gets loud noises, it kicks out for some reason. I don't know how to stop it. So what I did was I took a screwdriver and adjusted the high end on it. I floored it and I adjusted it to get that maximum. If you go too far, you can hear it bog down. If you go too low, she bogs down. You want to tweak it right in the middle and get that high RPM. Let go, see if that idle comes down. The idle was a little bit high, so I tweaked the idle, the T button. And now she is good. She's got full power. Now we'll see how Paul likes it. Any questions or comments, feel free to give them to me. If I'm doing something crazy and it sounds ridiculous, hey, leave it in the comments. Help me learn too. You can fix it too.